Before we get started, can I request um, all of you to please put your phones on silent? Thank you. That will be really good. So just to get started, um, over the last few years, New Zealand has grown from strength to strength. We have seen, um, uh, we've expanded our footprint in India and have seen an increase in student numbers um, coming from, New uh, from India to New Zealand. Uh, the numbers have grown, uh, the, the quality of students in terms of high caliber students that we're seeing now in New Zealand campuses has grown quite a bit. We've also seen um, an amplified uh, collaboration opportunities between institutions in India and New Zealand. So um, like at the moment, we've got a huge number of academics um, going across various campuses in, New in India. With that as a backdrop, um, for today's press conference, I would like to invite on stage New Zealand High Commissioner to India, Her Excellency Ms. Joanna Kempkas, to um, inaugurate the session for today and give you a um, start with the New Zealand-India relationship. So over to Joanna, High Commissioner. Thank you. Tihei Maori ora, ena mana, ena reo, ena hoe fa, tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. It's a very long way of saying greetings to you all, to all the people that have come from near and far, and to welcome you here today. New Zealand is a country of 4.5 million people at pretty much the other end of the earth. So what is it that New Zealand and India might have in common? Um, much more than you might think. Uh, we've got a shared commonwealth heritage. Yeah, that's pretty uh, evident. We've got a shared language in English, but also in Hindi. Hindi is the fourth most commonly spoken language in New Zealand. We've got a strong passion for cricket. And we've got common values, a respect for human rights and the rule of law. Our relationship is of long standing. Not many people know that it was in 1810 that the first person of Indian origin settled in New Zealand. He happened to be a Bengali sailor who uh, stepped off the boat and fell in love with a local woman and decided that he just had to stay. Since then, our troops have served alongside each other uh, Indian troops actually serving in the same Anzac Brigade as New Zealanders and Australians in First World, One, First World War uh, when they landed at Gallipoli in Turkey. Since then, our people-to-people -people links have gone from strength to strength. And today, 4% of New Zealand's population are people of Indian origin. We have three Indian origin MPs in New Zealand, and in the last year, 55,000 people from India visited New Zealand and 66,000 people from New Zealand visited India. Moving to the education relationship that we're here to discuss today, more than 25,000 students from India studied in New Zealand in 2016. The vast majority of those students who study in New Zealand make a very valuable and positive contribution to New Zealand campuses and to its society. The data from this year, preliminary as it is, says that it's shaping up to be a very good year with numbers going into our tertiary and higher levels of study growing well. To encourage Indian students of high calibre to choose New Zealand universities, Education New Zealand, along with our eight universities, has launched the New Zealand Excellence Award last year featuring partial scholarships for deserving Indian students studying business, design, and STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects. The overall budget was New Zealand $160,000. If my maths is right, that's about 80 lakh rupees. And it covered 31 awardees. Those scholarships received a great reception uh, in India, in all parts of India, and selected students are now pursuing their courses in New Zealand. Some of them had an opportunity to be acknowledged by the New Zealand Minister of Tertiary Education, Minister Paul Goldsmith, at the India New Zealand Business Council Summit in Auckland last month. 
I now present to you some of the Indian students who were awarded the first round of scholarships in the New Zealand Excellence Awards and the fine universities in which they studied. Play the video, please. New Zealand has strong commitment towards strengthening that relationship. And with that, can I now request Education New Zealand's Regional Director for South, Southeast Asia and the Middle East, Mr. John Laxon, to come on stage and give us a brief understanding on the relationship, the education relationship between India and New Zealand. So over to you, John. Thank you. Good afternoon, namaste, and kia ora, as we say in New Zealand. Uh, thank you, Jignu, and uh, Your Excellency High Commissioner, Ms. Joanna Kempkes. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon to talk about the plethora of education initiatives which Education New Zealand is proud to announce today. And in sum, these initiatives continue to position New Zealand as uh, the new and brightest destination for Indian students who want a positive learning experience and global career opportunities. The first initiative which I'd like to talk to you uh, today about is the uh, New Zealand Academic Guest Lecture Series. Uh, initiated in 2016, uh, the second series of our Academic Guest Lecture Series uh, involves nine world-leading academics from New Zealand universities, uh, giving 27 lectures to Indian students at prestigious institutes, Indian Institutes of Technology and universities across uh, five of our key cities, Chennai, Bangalore, Mumbai, Pune and Delhi. Uh, these academics are from varied fields including life sciences, biogeography, engineering, management, maths, social work and a discipline I found out about uh, just recently, uh, drone science for GNS technologies. Uh, this lecture series really is about demonstrating that from New Zealand's perspective, the bilateral education relationship with India is a two-way street. Uh, we are investing in bringing our brightest academics to India so that Indian students can have the chance to work with world-leading academics uh, from world-leading universities uh, in innovative and new research areas. Longer term, we also see the guest lecture series as being a vital ingredient for growing institutional partnerships uh, between our leading New Zealand universities uh, and universities and institutes of technology here in India. We are looking forward to these linkages growing over the coming years and hope it exceeds uh, 1.4 million on Twitter and uh, I think almost 2 million on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Education New Zealand's first Indian brand ambassador, Ms. Kriti Sanon. With a lot of consideration, we have chosen Kriti to represent Education New Zealand. Born in a typical Indian family with an emphasis on education, including a chartered accountant father and a Delhi University professor as a mother, which I'm sure would have meant that homework was a priority in the household, uh, Kriti's story really exemplifies the global opportunities that can be created uh, where there is a commitment to education. Uh, and that's why from Education New Zealand's perspective, uh, we are proud not just to partner with Kriti to promote New Zealand as an education destination, uh, but also to promote the cause of education here in India. We are also excited to partner with Kriti, who has a great reach and uh, profile with young Indian students. Uh, this association will help Education New Zealand's presence uh, uh, and commitment to the Indian market and to also help inspire Indian students who are looking to pursue higher education abroad. Uh, it's now my pleasure to request that our High Commissioner, Her Excellency Ms Joanna Kempkes, uh, welcomes Kriti to the New Zealand family with a traditional Māori greeting uh, called the Hongi. So that's, that's the hongi, as John said, that is a traditional New Zealand Māori greeting. And you notice that we pressed our foreheads and noses together, and in doing so, we share the breath of life 
with each other and it's a way of intermingling our souls and welcoming Kriti truly to the New Zealand family. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Now that you are um, inducted into the larger New Zealand Inc. family, how does it feel? Uh, it feels great, firstly, and it, uh, it feels great to be a part of the New Zealand family. And thank you so much for welcoming me in the most traditional way. Hongi was uh, a very different and uh, great experience. And I love the concept behind it. I think it's, it's very, very interesting. Um, I think uh, education is something that I have always, always really felt uh, very strongly for. And uh, I'm glad that even though I've sort of switched my path to a filmy uh, career, uh, I'm glad that I'm still able to do something in the line of education for the students of our country. And uh, thank you so much. I, ho I hope that I'm able to inspire a lot of people and help them um, shape their career prospects in a better way. Yeah, great. Um, so um, I think a lot of people here would like to know a little bit about you and how was it growing up and uh, in your family, what was the um, thing on education? What was the emphasis of education with your parents and your rest of the family? Well, uh, as John said, uh, my, my mom's a uh, professor in Delhi University. She teaches physics. So uh, I was always good at physics. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad's a chartered accountant. So education was always very, very important. Uh, in my uh, house and it was very important to do well also. Uh, so I was a very studious kid uh, getting above 90% in all my classes and um, I was one of those kids who, who uh, can't sleep without finishing your course if you have an exam tomorrow. Uh, uh, the front benchers what we call. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I think, uh, you know, that, that thing was inculcated in me that Whatever I do, I have to give it my best, and I have to do it right. Mm -hmm. So that was always there, and uh, I chose uh, to uh, go for engineering in electronics and communication, um, which again, I think, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't only help you uh, increase or enhance your analytic mm -hmm. ability, uh, but I think it also teaches you how to work best under pressure, because you have exams like thrice in four months which is insane. <laughs> uh, and uh, when I realized what I wanted to do in life, mm -hmm. when I realized my passion, um, I was still told by my parents, and it's something that I wanted myself to, mm -hmm. to complete my degree, to complete my education, sure. because I feel that uh, primary education and a good qualification um, not only makes you feel secure, but also somewhere um, improves your personality, it, it, it's mm -hmm. what makes you have your opinions in life. Sure. You know, what, what you want to do, your sense of right and wrong. Um, you're more aware and you're more confident about every decision that you're making in life. Yeah. So I think education has been like the thing in my family which you have to do no matter what. <laughs> so yeah, we've got a physics whiz kid and <laughs> a studious student. Um, Hi, Commissioner, would you like to add something on um, the importance of education both as the head of mission for New Zealand in India and also as a parent of young children. Thanks, Jibu. Well, yeah, as, um, as a parent, uh, it's really important that we guide our children and encourage in them the interest in education. That's not to say that we have to direct them into one particular area or another, but that we really try and foster in them that love of thinking of school uh, and of education in general. Because in a lot of cases, kids don't understand the importance of education. Why do I have to do my homework? Why do I have to <laughs> Why? And in the case of my kids, they don't understand why I drag them halfway around the world. Um, but it does create interesting conversations. And uh, a few weeks ago, we had a really interesting conversation in my house about the importance of being a global citizen, which is one of the reasons why I do drag my kids halfway around the world. Um, and I think getting an international education really does help you understand why it's important to be a global citizen if you can, why you should help try and solve some of the problems that are besetting uh, the world rather than living in your own little bubble. Getting that in international education in New Zealand really rewards students who want to 
think critically, to question, uh, to question the status, status quo, to be a bit innovative, and uh, really to think independently, creatively. Um, so it, it's a great opportunity for them to see a different part of the world and a different way of thinking and doing things. Yeah, I agree totally. I think both of you um, did emphasize on the fact that innovation and creativity is at the helm of all changes. Yeah, um, so I think with that change, uh, we come back to you, Kriti, on how is it transitioning from a very studious academic engineer <laughs> to uh, films? And how do you think that degree helped you um, work or change your career path? You know, I think uh, it's so strange because as a kid, I was so shy that when someone used to come to my house, I used to just go and hide like behind my mom. Um, so coming to uh, a time where I'm facing live audience, I'm acting in front of the camera, where there are like hundreds of people around, uh, and not being conscious, I think it is the education that I've gotten that's over the time helped me. Um, education, I feel, is firstly a lifelong process. It's not every day you're learning something new, something sure. different. Even today when I'm, when I'm working on the set, I'm learning new things every day and I'm growing as a person because of that. Um, not too many of us, I feel, realize our passions um, very soon in life. I think they're only fortunate people who know exactly what they're passionate about, what they want to do in their life, you know. And I think um, I realized that when I started modeling when I was in my second year of college. Mm -hmm. um, but to have the confidence to just switch in a different direction um, also needs, you know, a sense of security, which I think my educational degree gave to me and to my parents to a large extent. Um, because I just wanted to finish my uh, degree. I had two job offers in my hand, but I knew what I, what I really wanted to do. And that certainty in your mind, mm -hmm. you know, of of chasing your dreams, uh, that confidence that you have, I think it all comes from being educated because you know the pros and cons of things, you, you form opinions, um, you're more aware of what's happening around and what can be done and what can be achieved. So I think uh, it has helped me a lot. In fact, um, even today when I'm on set, I feel uh, engineering does one thing, it makes you question a lot you learn how to put logics to everything that you do. Uh, you don't just follow directions. You know everything has a why to it. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, when I'm on set, when I'm thinking of a character, I'm someone who asks a lot of questions. But it's important for me because it's important for me to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Sure. And um, yeah, I think uh, putting logic to things is something yeah. that's come from education that I use in my everyday life as an actor. Yeah, absolutely. I think, well said. It's it's a whole life learning process. And and John, on that, would you like to um, sort of give some thoughts on how uh, New Zealand education helps develop that lifelong learning education opportunity for students? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Jodhna. Uh Well, first of all, I think one point to emphasise is that our education system is built on uh, the sorts of uh, inquisitiveness and uh, critical thinking that Kriti was talking about. So right from uh, the school age through to uh, our universities and other institutions, uh, we have very open and uh, collaborative learning environments. Uh, and that gives a, uh, gets a positive uh, learning experience for students to go out to question things um, and also to uh, connect in with other international students, New Zealand students, uh, and with industry. Uh, New Zealand's fortunate enough to welcome uh, more than 130,000 international students to our country. Um, so we are proud of the fact that we give those uh, international students opportunity. Um, so whether that's connecting uh, with our ministers or prime minister, uh, in the case of our New Zealand Excellence Award recipients, uh, or to connecting them with industry. Um, so all of our students, uh, international students, uh, can apply for work rights uh, and connecting and have internships at our universities as well. Um, so all of those features uh, allow students to not only critically think about their, their future uh, career prospects, but also to connect in, in New Zealand and abroad uh, to make those career prospects happen. Yeah, true, absolutely. Um, so Kriti, um, why did you um, sort of choose to associate yourself um, with New Zealand education? 
Firstly, as I said, education is something that I'm always all in for. I think it's, it's so, so important for every individual. And I think uh, uh, in the times that we are in um, and the coming time, I think technology is something that's becoming more and more important uh, with every passing day. And I think we, we need to come to a point where we um, help a future generation that is more of a um, global citizen. You know, it, it's, uh, it consists of more of glo global citizens who uh, are not only having an educational qualification, but at the same time are able to adapt to different cultures, are able to uh, adapt to different surroundings, mm -hmm. uh, are able to collaborate with people from across the world, and, um, and just become, just come at par with everyone who's around uh, in different parts of this world. So I think it's very important to just go out there, experience things, to, um, to experience different ways of education. I think the methods of education are so different in every country. Yeah. And New Zealand, I feel, has one of the best opportunities, uh, the maximum variety of courses um, with, as he said, a very, very safe, a very positive and multicultural environment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, all the universities of uh, New Zealand come uh, under the top 3% globally, which yeah. is superb. I myself have so many cousins who actually have gone and studied, yeah. uh, done their postgrads and all in New Zealand, and they've spoken some great things about it. Yeah. So I think, I think uh, for people in India, um, I feel it's, it's important to just also go out there and uh, have the opportunities mm. to study what you really like yeah. um, in an environment which is very different and very global. Yeah. Great. I think um, New Zealand definitely is one of the safest and the most beautiful countries in the world. So, so absolutely agree on that. Um, Priti, would, uh, uh, John, would you like to add on the kind of courses that we are seeing Indian students uh, go and pursue in um, New Zealand over the last few years? And what are the changes, sort of trends that we are seeing now? Yes. Uh, so traditionally, the STEM subjects, science, uh, mathematics, the finances have been uh, the most popular courses that we've seen students uh, choosing to study in New Zealand. Um, but we have seen some exciting uh, trends, particularly from our, our Indian students who are choosing uh, New Zealand, where they are looking for subjects that uh, differentiate themselves from the pack. You know, it's becoming, uh, as Kriti said, a, an increasingly uh, competitive uh, global environment, both in terms of technology and in um, career prospects. Um, so we're seeing students taking more niche subjects, um, particularly uh, in terms of uh, sustainability and environmental studies in the, the New Zealand case where we're, we're world leaders in those areas, um, but also in, in other uh, technology fields such as uh, robotics or um, even the creative industries such as uh, animation or film production or the like. So there are, and it's one of the things that New Zealand prides itself on, uh, many niche programs that can help uh, international students from all over the world mm -hmm. just differentiate themselves uh, from um, some of the more traditional markets. And that's why we're seeing yeah. uh, significant growth. And in fact, uh, this year alone, uh, we've seen a 40% increase in the number of Indian students oh, wow. choosing to study in New Zealand universities. Yeah. So that's, that's really great. Um, Hi, Commissioner, would you like to add anything um, from your perspective that you've seen over your um, recent uh, months in India, um, education develop? Well, one of the things that I find really exciting is the fact that we're encouraging more high caliber Indian students to do PhDs or doctoral studies in New Zealand. As someone who supported a, a partner going through a doctoral study um, themselves, I know how critical it is that the package that supports the whole family is right. And the New Zealand government does provide a very good package for PhD students in New Zealand in that uh, they only pay domestic student fees, their family members are able to access full-time work, and if they have children, their children are also able to attend New Zealand schools in the same way as that New Zealand children can, paying only New Zealand domestic fees. And in most cases, primary education in New Zealand is free. Great. So that sort of sums up our discussion for today, and I think... Uh, what, what's quite visible from our discussion, um, right from different types of courses um, to um, Kriti being extremely studious um, <laughs> student to um, uh, the increase in student numbers. New Zealand's definitely that pot of gold sitting at the end of the rainbow. 
And if I was to give you um, just a sum up of the advantages, I mean, it's definitely a safe, warm, positive environment for students. Um, all our universities are in the top 3%. Um, New Zealand offers holistic education. Um, also, uh, um, I think last but no way the least is that um, it offers students a taster into the Kiwi outdoors. And that's something that uh, Indian students do miss to a large extent. I mean, maybe it's the weather conditions or the rain or whatever that people don't tend to, uh, students don't tend to experience the outdoors um, in India, and which is a perfect opportunity in New Zealand. So um, a great place. And uh, with that, um, can I now request um, John to please present a special souvenir to um, Kriti to welcome her into the Education New Zealand world. So this is beautiful. This is a special uh, koru carving, which signifies new beginning, new life, growth, strength, and peace. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank now, uh, you. Can I just tell you the significance of this yeah, carving? Yeah, usually happens. We're done. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So this is um, we'll a special koru carving. It signifies new beginning, new life, which is totally uh, apt for this relationship, which is starting with Kriti. Growth, strength, and peace. The inner, the circular shape of the koru helps to convey the idea of perpetual movement. Whoa. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. It's, it's just a stand. Broken. It's just a stand. <laughs> While the inner coils suggest a return to the point of origin. So with that, uh, we will now open uh, the floor for questions. So if you have any um, questions specifically around education and Kriti's association with New Zealand education, or if you have questions from the ENZ spokespeople around um, courses and students and some of the new announcements, Please feel free. This is your chance to ask. Just one request. Um, please raise your hands, and we'll make sure a mic reaches you. I have a feeling we've covered everything. Over. I know. I think we've covered everything, <laughs> so we haven't left much no, of an opportunity. Hi, Kriti. Uh, Hi. At the back. Hi, Priyanka from Indian Express. Uh, Kriti, I uh, wanted to ask that uh, how much do you, I mean, has there been, been a moment when you missed not, uh, you know, having studied abroad? Like you said that your, a lot of your cousins have studied in New Zealand. And also wanted to know that how much do you think uh, a person evolves uh, globally if he or she studies abroad? Uh, thanks, Priyanka, for the question. Uh, well, uh, missing studying abroad, uh, I must tell you, I've given a GMAT entrance exam. Uh, and I have a score which I think now is not valid. Uh, I gave that uh, with, uh, you know, a plan B, a backup thing for my parents because my parents were like, oh, you've done your B.Tech and now you're not uh, pursuing it and you're going and you're doing something completely uh, different. What if you don't, uh, you know, excel at that and what if you don't get an opportunity? So I actually had an opportunity to go and study abroad. Uh, but I had sort of found my passion in films, and that's, where, that's why I'm here. Uh, but I do feel that, um, yes, you do evolve uh, as a person. I think when I see uh, my friends or, or, or even my cousins who study, studied abroad, I think uh, it sort of broadens their horizon. Uh, their perspective on things is very different. I think, uh, you know, how living independently away from your family sort of evolves you as a person. It's almost similar, living away from your country, um, uh, seeing the methods of other people, interacting with people who are uh, culturally very different from you, um, I think also evolves you as a person. I think, uh, you know, I do realize it, that the more you interact with different cultures, the more you interact with different people, um, the more aware you are and it internally changes you as a person when, where you don't even realize. I think even today, like, when I'm in this profession, I feel that only because I'm able to talk to uh, people with different opinions on things, uh, am I able to think the way I do right now. Mm. Yeah. 
Absolutely, and I think this uh, this sort of relationship is that um, global global citizen edge for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of. Um, yeah, do we have any more questions? Yeah. Yes. I have a question for John. I want to know the degrees in law and arts from New Zealand. How successful are they in India or elsewhere across the globe? STEM, I know, is very successful, but I know, want to know about law and arts. The degrees you get there, how successful are they here? I would say very successful. Uh, so it depends for taking law in the first instance. We do have uh, world-ranked law faculties in New Zealand, uh, and it does depend on, on which career plan or pathway uh, the student might be wanting to take. Um, but it is a very well-regarded uh, degree internationally. I know um, being uh, based internationally myself at the moment, I have many colleagues who have studied law in New Zealand and now are forging global careers um, for uh, very successful multinationals. Uh, in terms of the arts subjects, it is an area that, uh, interestingly enough, doesn't always get the, the volume of international students uh, to New Zealand, um, but the ones that do choose to study arts in New Zealand um, have a fantastic experience and they also contribute a huge amount to our campuses uh, in New Zealand. Um, if we broaden the, the degree out to the creative industries, I think that is an area where New Zealand has a, a very unique proposition. So we're luckily, lucky enough to have uh, the Lord of the Rings and Sir Peter Jackson and a very thriving uh, creative arts industry in New Zealand. Um, so that means that in addition to the, the great lecturers and, and academics that, that the students get to work with, um, they can walk down the road and be in one of, uh, not quite a, a Bollywood uh, studio, <laughs> but, but a, a New Zealand Wellywood studio, um, and be mingling with, um, with actors and with uh, producers and with the creative, uh, creative arts industry. So it's a very connected um, environment where, where students get not just the, the learning experience in an academic sense, um, but also the life experience that, that sets them up uh, for the future. So I'm an arts graduate. You're I a am critics well. and engineering graduate. Yes. Two arts graduates, one engineering. Commerce. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, there's, a, there's a spread on the stage, and the arts yeah. have it. And, and we've recruited Kriti to the arts since then as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Hello, uh, I'm Ruchita from Midday Gujarati. I just wanted to know that education is becoming so much costly nowadays. So what are the ways you are going to subsidize it? how you can give a concession or some kind of discounts to the students? Is there excellence of that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, I a plus for the answer. Yeah. A plus uh, for the answer. So, so as you would have seen, we are launching the New Zealand Excellence Awards uh, today, and that offers uh, 35 partial scholarships to uh, high quality students who are looking to study at our New Zealand universities. Um, that's one of several uh, scholarships or awards programs that are offered either uh, in partnership with Education New Zealand or through our education institutions. Um, and for further information on those, I would suggest going to studyinnewzealand.govt.nz. Uh, that's our website there, which you can see uh, over to the right. Um, and on that website, there's a, a huge amount of information um, about uh, the awards and scholarships that are available to international students. Um, but we do recognise it it's a significant investment for international students and that's why uh, as the High Commissioner said as well our government offers uh, other programs such as PhD mm -hmm. scholarships um, for all international students um, so that is, is an area where we're committed to making sure there are avenues for high quality Indian students to have a great experience in New Zealand. And I think worth noting too John that those uh, New Zealand Excellence Awards are specifically for Indian students mm -hmm. yeah. so that's not a global program that's a program specifically yeah. for Indian students. All right. Thank you very much. Um, you've been a great audience, and I hope all the questions were answered. Um, may I now request you to join us for lunch um, just outside? Um, those of you who are planning to post any of uh, the content from today on social media, these are the hashtags that you can use. Okay, so and um, I think for the videographers, we collect on the left, my left. Thank you very much. Center, center. Center, center, please. Center, center. Center, center, please. Center, center, please. Center, center, please. Center, center, please. Center, center, please.
कौन सा सीरियल चलो आई थिंक पहली बात तो एजुकेशन एक ऐसी चीज़ है जिसके बारे में मैं बहुत स्ट्रॉगली फील करती हूँ बहुत पहले से फील करती हूँ आई थिंक एजुकेशन इज़ समथिंग जो uh, आपकी पर्सनालिटी को निखारती है आपके ओपिनियंस जो हैं वो एजुकेशन पे बेस्ड होते हैं आप कितने इन्फॉर्म्ड हैं कितने अवेयर हैं uh, आप डिसीजंस अच्छे से ले पाते हैं अगर आप एजुकेटेड हैं uh, आपको सही गलत की अपनी ज़्यादा पहचान होती है आप किसी भी प्रॉब्लम में हैं तो इफ़ यू आर एजुकेटेड यू कैन यू कैन फाइंड अ वे टू गेट आउट ऑफ दैट प्रॉब्लम एंड यू आर नॉट अंडर कॉन्फिडेंट इन एनी सिचुएशन तो आई थिंक इट्स समथिंग दैट आई हैव ऑलवेज वांटेड टू डू एंड आई एम सो ग्लैड दैट आई एम एट दिस पॉइंट इन माई करियर वेर आई एम एक्चुअली अ लिटल अवे फ्रॉम माई एजुकेशनल डिग्री इन टू अ फिल्म करियर आई एम स्टिल गेटिंग एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू सपोर्ट द कॉज ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड येस इट इज़ अ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी आई थिंक Uh, I am in a way responsible um, as a catalyst, maybe, uh, to shape the educational and career prospects for the students of our country uh, in New Zealand. Um, I think New Zealand uh, has one of the best educational institutes. Uh, all the universities are in the top three percent globally, which is great. It offers such a variety of, uh, you know, courses in a very safe and positive environment. so that was my one point when i was uh, you know getting associated with them um, because i think i think aaj ke zamane mein technology itni important ho gayi hai that dheere uh, dheere it's very important to uh, move towards global citizenship towards being global citizens who not only um, can stand tall in india but can stand tall globally can interact with different people from different countries can adapt to different cultures and surroundings so i think when you when you um, have a sense of the methods of education from a different country uh, you know you evolve as a person and it really helps you and when you're getting such great opportunities in a country like new zealand nothing like it ओके मेरे कितना ब्रॉड मोड बनती है आप इसलिए क्योंकि एक इंडिया को आप न्यूजीलैंड के थॉट में और इस एम्प्लॉयमेंट इंडस्ट्री को आप वहाँ पे प्रेजेंट कर रही हो तो क्या कहना चाहेंगे इसके बारे में आई एम वेरी ऑनर्ड आई एम very very glad that i was the chosen person for um education in new zealand and um, from india 
and uh, I think uh, again the way I said education is something which I really feel for and uh, it's about the bright future of the students of our country it's about getting them different opportunities better opportunities varied opportunities so that they can stand tall in life I think and if I'm associated with that cause I can't ask for more मैं अभी तक कोई भी ऐसा फ्यूचर मेरा प्रोजेक्ट नहीं है जो अनाउंस हुआ है या फिर मैंने अनाउंस किया है तो आई वुड जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट यू टू वेट फॉर अ लिटिल लॉन्गर देर आर टू प्रोजेक्ट एक्चुअली विच आर सेट यस टू एंड वेन द टाइम इज राइट द प्रोड्यूसर्स विल अनाउंस इट वेल आई वुड लव टू आई होप इट्स ट्रू मैंने Apart from education, I think uh, I think their culture, I think the vibe of uh, the country, uh, the varied climates, uh, the adventure sports that they uh, that they offer. Uh, so I'm I'm yet to visit New Zealand uh, properly and go on a uh, tourist kind of a trip, which I would probably do soon. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.